dobre. Hello, hello. That's the sum total of my Polish, I'm sorry. But um, I'm going to talk to you today, very briefly, because I only have a short time, about... Sorry, can I just check where my... Ah, oh, OK. Just check where, the, um, where my countdown is. So I'm going to talk to you about the world that we are already entering. And it is a very different world from the one that we all grew up in and that our parents inhabited. And the world that our infrastructure, the systems, the institutions that we live in and we work with were all made. So let me remind you about the year that we've just had. It was the first year that the global average temperature exceeded one and a half degrees above the pre-industrial average. So you may have heard a lot from leaders about keeping below 1.5, keep 1.5 alive. Well, we have exceeded that for one year. The temperature is already increasing. It will continue to increase. We're likely to exceed two degrees um, in the coming decades, and then it will continue to go up. Now, it really, really was extraordinary what we experienced last year. And I'm just showing you this so that you can see the stark difference. We are now living in the post-climate change world. It is a different world. It means that the, um, the conditions that we took for granted, the reliable seasons, the reliable weather periods, harvests, the uh, types of agriculture that we can grow and where we can grow them, this has all changed. We're now moving into a world of extremes. This is the sea surface temperature. We're seeing dramatic changes in uh, fisheries. This is just the last one um, that, I, that I took. And this is a world which is becoming dramatically unlivable in places across the world. So um, the Philippines had a, uh, a heat wave above 50 degrees, but so has most of um, South Asia as well as Southeast Asia. These are unlivable conditions and they continue. So last year, we had 60,000 excess deaths just in Europe. And I want to clarify that this is something that is happening here. It's not just happening over there in the global south. It's happening everywhere. This is a global phenomenon, and it's having huge repercussions to people's lives. So what happens is as the uh, temperature increases, as, the, um, as uh, more carbon dioxide or methane or other greenhouse gases trap that heat, they're trapping extra energy. And it's that extra energy that drives these much more intense storms that dries out the soil so we get drought. Poland has had at least a decade of increasing drought. It's a huge problem for agriculture. It's going to be um, increasingly a problem even for things like infrastructure. Because as the soils dry out, they, um, they creep away from the foundations of our infrastructure, weakening them. And then they, uh, hot air holds a lot more uh, moisture. And that extra moisture doesn't come down in a drizzle. It comes down as flash floods. And that washes away that infrastructure. It washes away the topsoil of um, agriculture. Um, and it causes landslides. It causes huge problems globally. Uh, we had in Pakistan a couple of years ago, we had uh, intense heat. These are cascading effects. We had the intense heat waves of uh, weeks months um, of intense heat in the high 40 degrees. This was followed, um, and, and drought, and this was followed by flash floods and landslides that made 33 million people uh, homeless, displaced within one week. We're going to see these cascading effects. That flash floods also washed away the topsoil, washed away a lot of um, agriculture, and that means food availability becomes limited, which pushes the food prices up, which makes it unaffordable. And, you know, climate change is a threat multiplier. So that means it feeds into a lot of the uh, experiences 
people are already having, whether that is poverty, whether it is marginalization because of the kind of uh, religion or tribal group or language group or whatever, or skin color that people live in. When the uh, main government, when the, the state cannot provide the basics that a state is supposed to provide, you know, enough food, water, security, homes, etc. That leaves a vacancy for uh, other groups, for extremist groups to come in and gain support because they can promise that they can provide these things. And so when we get hunger from Sudan to Mali, as we have at the moment because of climate change, because of drought, it feeds in to that instability, that conflict, it exacerbates a lot of the things that we already have. And that's happening. This, this inequality of experience is happening not just globally, between the global north and the global south, but also within nations. In the world's richest country, in U the United States, it's notable that uh, the people that suffer the most from the effects of extreme heat or flooding are the poorest, the ones that cannot afford to sell their uninsurable homes and move to safety when floods and storms hit, when fires hit. They are the uh, poor black people that are living in the basement apartments in New York that drown in their apartments. So this is something that, is, uh, that highlights inequality across the world and that we have to grapple with. So, you know, people are displaced in the rich world, in the poor world. The world is becoming increasingly unlivable. It's because of climate change, it's because of our emissions pathways. I'm not going to show you lots and lots of graphs, don't panic. The good news is we are no longer following the emissions pathway of business as usual, which is the 8.5 emissions scenario. So we're not going to see those horrific temperatures um, at the end of the century and with the associated sea level rise. The bad news is we are not following this nice keep safe, keep below two degrees either. We're somewhere between those two. There is a high likelihood that at the end of the century we will be on a global average of between three and four degrees above the pre-industrial average. Now that is a devastating issue. It's, um, it's devastating for the economy. Billions, tens of billions of pounds, I think it was about 60 billion euros was um, spent in uh, disaster damage just in the EU um, in, the, in the last year. The year before it was even higher. The United States were well above that. Climate disasters are very expensive. The reason that we are not following the business as usual scenario is because we are decarbonizing our economies. We are moving towards a huge and phenomenal renewable energy outlay. But it is not enough and it is not fast enough. Right, this is affecting Europe um, as well. But as you can see, at four degrees, these multiple impacts of disaster followed by disaster. Most climate refugees, by the way, are at the moment uh, moving within borders, multiply quite often, as they get hit by one thing after another, and they're living in uh, very vulnerable places. But as you can see, the unlivable conditions that we are expecting to see over the coming decades stretch you know, through the Americas down to Patagonia, up to the Great Lakes. Um, in southern Europe has already lost its nice Mediterranean climate. We're already seeing desert conditions across the southern Spain. Um, uh, parts of Italy are on fire. Southern, northern parts are flooded. Uh, agriculture is massively affected. Who remembers the terrible um, uh, floods and storms um, that hit Gre from Greece to, uh, to Germany, wiping out enormous amounts of agricultural production? Uh, Africa, Asia, essentially, these are places that are home to around a third of the world's population. Look also at the top of the map, at the lucky countries. Nowhere on earth is going to escape 
the negative impacts of climate change. But these places on the north will have uh, uh, impacts that um, are adaptable. We can adapt to those. Poland, right, terrible drought. Poland can adapt to that by building better water uh, management infrastructure. Okay, and that includes everything from um, hydropower to dams to storage to stopping leaks to better at water efficiency. Um, again, crops, uh, you know, the uh, agriculture, it will see some positive impacts of climate change. Winters will be less, less difficult, less cold. So across the north, we have also usually better governance and institutions, more wealth, People there are, are better in various social, cultural, political, economic ways to, um, to adapt to the uh, conditions that are coming. We are going to see, we are already to seeing a migration from the worst hit places in the tropics to the safer parts of our planet. This is a good thing for us. It's not a good thing, obviously, for people who are hit by climate change. It's terrible. But our economies are suffering another crisis, the demographic crisis. We haven't, we haven't got, an, we're not having enough babies to support our aging population. We have labor shortages. Poland's economy is growing. It's uh, welcomed some three million Ukrainians very recently, uh, which have joined the labor force. The worst thing that could happen to Poland is those Ukrainians go home in a few years. Then they will leave vacancies. So this is a migration not just of people, but of capital, of investment, of infrastructure, of resources, of skills and expertise, of agriculture. It's a shift north. And it's something that is an opportunity if we manage it well. If we make this work in a way that we have to be pragmatic, we, the numbers are not certain of how many people will move. That depends on how we mitigate climate change, how we help people in the global south adapt to these temperatures. But large populations are not going to be sustainable in some of the places that are worst hit. We need to wake up to this fact. We need to take leadership over this. And we need to plan. We need to plan investment, both financially and socially, in the places that are safe across our planet. And that means building up institutions, academic institutions, putting industry, and there are plenty of new industries. You will have heard a lot about AI in, the, uh, in this uh, Congress. There are plenty of others, biotech, that are just, you know, just about to uh, reach fruition that are very, very important. Nature restoration, the huge, um, the huge energy transition that's coming. Um, of course, care work as people get older. So this is an opportunity. It's something that we need to be honest about and pragmatic about. Climate change is already here. It is changing. It is making our world increasingly unlivable. It means people will move. We can manage it so it is not a catastrophe, so it is not a disaster, so that we build productive cities full of um, opportunity that are green and clean, for your children, my children, and the expanded cities of our Anthropocene going forward. Thank you for listening. Please think about this and talk about it. My book comes out. It's Nomad Century, and it comes out in Polish today. Happy Publication Day to me. And it's uh, available in the bookshop with a lot more information. Yeah. Yeah.